Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And good day again So today I'm going to share with you A new topic uh, on energy balance in non-reactive system Okay, so this is the part 1 uh, In the previous lecture we have actually learned about The introduction to energy balance So what type of energy that we have uh, There are 6 forms of energy And then we are learning about the open and closed system and we learn how to derive the equation for both open and closed system for energy balance. So today I'm going to share with you about energy balance in non-reactive system. Okay, so how do we actually perform energy balance in a system where there is no reaction and what is involved, what is importantly involved uh, in this kind of um, in this kind of we're going to learn what is important in order for us to, to solve the problem related to energy balance in non-reactive system among which actually uh, you also have learned about calculating the specific heat capacity okay you learn about heat capacity and you have learned about calculating the change of enthalpy right and you have learned also that we cannot determine exactly what is enthalpy and what is what will be the specific enthalpy and what will be the specific um, internal energy at certain temperature but you know that there is a change of enthalpy or change of internal energy for closed system when there is a change of temperature okay it also you have also learned in the past that whenever that there is a change of um, phase between for example like liquid to gas or solid to liquid there is also a change of enthalpy and we have learned the terms that is related to it such as heat of vaporization for example from liquid to gas so we're going to move into the new topic uh, in this video we're going to teach you about energy balance in non-reactive system by the end of this topic then you should be able to perform energy balance for non-reactive system and just so you know that we have learned about this particular equation uh, in in our material balance okay so when we have the input okay and we have the generation minus with output minus consumption is equals to accumulation so the input is actually imagine that if let's say you have a system okay you have a system and you have something goes in and something goes out and which is this is simply straight away an open system because the material lift system so when you have the input which is something that is enters through system boundaries okay and then when you have the output it is something that lives through the system boundaries so this is the system boundary itself okay and then generation is something that is produced within this particular system anything that is produced within the system is generation consumption is something that is used up from the inlet part okay and accumulation is something that is left inside here without going up from the stream so in our case if let's say we are dealing with the open system we know that there is an if it an open system if it non-reactive as we're going to discuss today so there is no generation and there is no consumption okay and if because there is an in and going out an open system there is no accumulation as well so this is just between input and output However, right, in the case of um, closed system, okay, there's nothing going out, okay, there's nothing going out, so we may not put, and, and because there is non-reactive as well, so there is no generation, so there is no consumption, but there are accumulation, because uh, when you put something, there is nothing out, but there is a, some accumulation inside here, so that is some considered as a closed system and you know that the input is not something that is going continuous it's just something that you put at the initial and then you close the system and then there's something inside there right so that is considered as closed system because there is no boundary um, leaving or entering the system so when we talk about energy balance for closed system we have been given this kind of equation where actually uh, there is a change of internal energy plus with the change of kinetic energy plus the change of potential energy equals to Q minus W. Okay, so if you remember Q is actually the heat okay, provided to the system 
and minus w is actually the work done by the system okay and that's why it becomes negative so again taking a condition where we have a pistons and we have a closed container and you provide some heat okay initially it has some ui which is the initial internal energy after you provide some heat then it changed to uf okay so the uf minus ui is actually the change of internal energy and then slowly because the gas inside the piston expand then it push up it push the piston so the when it push the piston it do some work so it is minus w so in actual when we try to balance okay equals when we put input equals to um output right for example then we know that the input heat energy here is q okay the input energy here is q and the work done here is actually delta u plus with w okay so if you add up the change of internal energy plus with the w you will actually get similar amount of the heat provided here so that's why when you rearrange back and assuming that if there is no kinetic energy and there is no potential energy involved you will just get q is equals to delta u minus w and therefore delta u sorry plus w and delta u is equals to q minus w so that is actually about energy balance in a closed system so when we talk about this particular energy balance this is what we call as first law statement for a closed system okay so this is uh, something you got to do with the thermodynamics that you're going to learn later on uh, introduction in thermodynamics so it is highly related to it